Welcome, everyone, <laughs> back to another Call of Cthulhu episode uh, with us, the casual ones. Um, this is our looking like six part mini series before we get back to our regular D&D &D game. So thanks for joining us. If you haven't seen the other episodes, you know, go watch those now. They might inform this episode. Um, if you want to see us play anything else, um, such as Morkborg, Triangle Agency, myriad others uh links are all in the description and there's playlists and on all that jazz and also come chat with us on discord uh and now i have officially said all of the things that we need to say <laughs> checked list checked <laughs> off uh and we're gonna get our sillies out and <clears throat> we're gonna get down to business uh starting with last episode which was not so silly uh which was pretty serious Hmm. So, the investigators found themselves deep underneath the school, face to face with a, for lack of a better word, cultist of the Nagalith, with his enchanted blade and a poor unsuspecting student tied up being sacrificed. So, the Coach Parker could bring his wrestling team to victory and continue to live out millennia in his younger body. There was also a giant frog god, and that, that wasn't so cool. That's right. <laughs> he was a little scary. Um, so scary, in fact, that Clyde ran away. Uh, Howard. No, Donald got a little bit of a frog phobia, um, but uh, all in all, the investigators were able to save Jimmy and eliminate the threat of Coach Parker and separate him from his sacrificial knife, eliminating the frog god's avatar as well. They took themselves back home, rested up, recuperated a bit, and then went to find Professor Merriweather to get a little bit more information and let him know what happened. And they tried in the night, they tried again in the morning, and there was no answer at his door. However, they found a letter saying to come find him at St. Mary's Teaching Hospital, which they did. Turns out Professor Merriweather has been harboring a bit of a secret illness for quite some time and is now laying in his bed in the hospital. A distraught Penny handed over a box and a letter to the three investigators, which outlined a piece of Professor Merriweather's youth. I will give you the gist of this letter again. But essentially, Merriweather apologized and suggested that the, him and some friends when he was younger had unleashed some sort of abomination upon a house out in the countryside. However, him and his friends could not get themselves to return and do anything about this uh, with just too large of a fear overhanging them. He referenced some lives already being taken through the summoning and also mentioned that the method of delivering this thing back out of this world is within the accursed house, a translation of a book. He says that he's not strong enough to go back himself, and he fears that with his death, that this thing will be loosed upon the world. He has tasked the three of you with doing something to keep this from happening. And he signs the letter, I do not expect your forgiveness for what I ask of you. And the last thing I'll just say is within the box, there's a few pieces. There's a key and a deed to a house. There's a, a sarcophagus shaped box, and there's also a slim leather bound journal, which you have not looked at yet. 
And that is where we are now. So you're in the hallway of the hospital, having read this letter, perhaps all seated together on a bench, pouring over this. And Penny watches you from the door of Professor Merriweather's room. And she looks back. Um, you needed the key uh, to the house. Uh, here, and hands over the key to Professor Merriweather's home. Um, the book that we acquisitioned earlier in the week, is it here? Um, I believe it is in his study. Okay. Ooh, I'll have to make a stop. Uh, Penny, quick question for you. Of course. Uh, do you know about this letter and its contents and the things Meriwether claims? I don't know much. Um, I know that he's been looking for quite some time for someone to take this task on. He hasn't let me. He says it's too dangerous for me to know the specifics. Hmm. Um, but I have to admit I've done my fair share of snooping when cleaning up or or delivering items so perhaps there are questions i can answer um is this is just the ravings of an old man losing touch with reality or is this something because this seems incredibly urgent and imminent and i need to know that this isn't a waste of time. I I fully understand. And she she takes the or she motions to the journal that was in the box. Um, may I? Uh, yeah. Sure. Uh, she takes it and she flips open to the last page oh. where a newspaper article is adhered to the back of the journal, as well as a list of names. Um, there are six names in total, um, mm. including Rupert Merriweather, and there are uh, year or dates, uh, month and year next to each name other than his own. Rupert had me tracking his old school chums, um, keeping tabs on whether <laughs> Well, they showed up in the obituaries or not. Mm. Um, he appears to be the last one, and he, I, I think this is real, to be honest with you, uh, gentlemen. I don't think he would ask something so serious of you if it weren't. It's hard to not believe him after the evening we've had, honestly. The last few. Yeah. yeah. It's getting harder to explain away as hallucination. Yes, it's a interesting life, but I mean, I've seen Rupert over many years. Um, and you can tell when he's come back from something a little bit more out of this world. Uh, mm. He's not quite the same for a while. So I can only imagine what you gentlemen have been through. Yeah, it's been, it's been an interesting ride, to say the least. Uh, it feels like we're on a lot of a pressure cooker situation right now. I don't know. We're running out of time. I, I have had taken the liberty of discussing with the doctors, um, and, and she, she peeks into the window of the room, although he looks uh stable at best uh we do not know how many days he will be with us um i think there's time for you to rest you look like you need it and to make a plan of action you shouldn't go out there un uh unarmed and unready um but don't leave it too long whatever this thing he's asking you of it seems to align with 
his suspected death, which I never thought I would see. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sorry this is happening to both of you. All of you? I guess you all were much closer to him than I was. I don't think he was close to many. I think you were some of all of them. I mean, he i he was my teacher, so... I mean, at first. Yeah. yeah. He trusted you enough to include you. He, yeah. He spoke very highly of you all in the confidence of our salon. Well, I'm surprised by that, but I suppose we're doing something right. We've survived so far through these well, honestly bad shit crazy events. Um, I guess we should get a move on. Maybe do a quick split up if you two want to head to Merryweather's for that book, and I'll sure. I'll probably have to make a quick police report about finding Jimmy before that's a suspicious time lapse and him being found and uh, pretty sure there's still a dead body down there. Yeah. Yeah, I have to make a quick pit stop at Jimmy's, but I can happen with the book first. I just said I would check in on him before we left, so I just want to do that. Yeah, no yeah, we can split up three ways. It makes sense. Do you want I won't to... be long. I'll be, I just need to check on him and drop something off, and then I can meet you at the at Merryweather's. Yeah. I'll take Jimmy's bike. I'll ask, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So assuming that you're going to spend uh, the rest of the day and the next evening doing all of your individual tasks before you potentially reconvene. Um, let's uh, let's go through what you do. So Clyde, um, starting with you, what are the things you'd like to get accomplished over the next day? Yeah, I, I'm just going to reach out to one of my police contacts and let them know that there, um, there was a tip about something suspicious happening at the school. Uh, and on a hunch, I went to check it out and we found um, the student that was missing, Jimmy, last name Quinton, I believe, um, to be down there uh, dehydrated and definitely kind of hallucinating from hunger and thirst. <clears throat> and also that there was uh, possibly a, his captor there who seemed to have been killed when we had arrived. Uh, cool. Give me a fast talk <clears throat> check, but you can do this with advantage uh, because you are using your police contacts for something like okay. this. I should have spoken to the cops. <laughs> yeah. right? Isn't that what? weird? That if you talk to the police that I work with, it would be way better because I have 5% chance of this going well. Wow, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. I'm not a liar, apparently. My fast Jenny. talk is 81. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's just see what happens. All right, here we go. Come on, babies. This is Aaron rolling low, so. Yeah, yeah so pressure. it should be fine. Crit success. <laughs> <laughs> see? Let me like, yeah. make sure this is the right direction. I'll take a picture really quick. Stop it. Was it actually a crit success? Because that. Did you roll is... one? It's a zero, zero, 002. Yeah, wow. that's a two, man. Wow. So I beat it by 2%. How Holy crap. Do do this? Room was to that spare. Your, was that your first roll or did you first roll three roll? dice? Oh my god. Oh, I didn't even didn't even you roll didn't even the use your Don't even advantage. need to. Don't even <laughs> roll it just in case. Let's see <laughs> it roll double zeros again. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, could it get lower? No. Double zeros. Here we go. Yep. Here's the second picture. No, you didn't We roll are lower. winning tonight. No, no. Both, both were both were two. Because you only reroll the tens, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yep. um, but that's, yep. that's still wild. I'll send okay. those in the chat as proof. Um, future Rebecca, throw it up on screen because uh, yeah. that's unbelievable. 
I just gave myself more editing work. Okay, so. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, yeah, they your contact takes the information, um, as always assures you that this will be confidential and appreciates your continued help uh, with police business. And you go about the rest of your day with the feeling that uh, you, you've you helped and that you are not under suspicion. Um, and uh, yeah, is there anything else you would like to do or get accomplished before leaving? No, I think just catch up on some sleep. Uh, I think I go over the old photographs and news clippings and kind of make sure that there wasn't anything missing, that this is the full answer. There there very likely isn't like a an accomplice for, uh, was it Parker, mm -hmm. uh, Coach Parker? So making sure this seems to be tied up um, <clears throat> and yeah. kind of take down all the things and put them all into a file folder. Yeah, you absolutely continue. do so. Um, you even find like further information in the newspaper archives uh, that you have available, um, kind of suggesting where Coach Parker potentially even got this knife. Um, mention of a traveling Egyptology uh, museum that aligns with the years or the year that uh, Coach Parker uh, originally from that original um, photograph that you found uh, or that your team found in the yearbook. So everything really feels pretty cut and dry and uh, weird, but tied up. Great. Yeah. And I take that horror and go to sleep. And <laughs> well, probably get a late start on the day tomorrow and head over to Mary Weathers. Perfect. Um, if you have, I don't think you took any damage, but if you did, you can heal one hit point for uh, taking it easy today as well. Nice. Uh, Donald, what would you like to do? Uh, so out of the possessions that Meriwether gave us, there was some sort of tiny sarcophagus and a leather bound book. Correct. Um, I'll probably take in the leather bound book and go over to Rupert's place to start going through all of his things, but also taking some time to you know, actually fully read through the book since it looks like it's research on what happened at his little farmhouse. Absolutely. So you make your way over to Meriwether's and let yourself in with the key provided. Uh, you make yourself at home. You can pour a drink if you'd like. Nobody is here. And you open the leather bound journal. Uh, you notice at first, first thing, all of the entries are in English and they all appear to be by Meriwether himself. And you're reading the whole journal it's in, in its entirety. Yeah, I'm try to. Um, how how big is it? Um, <laughs> there's quite a few entries. I will read. Uh, well, I'll read most of them to you, uh, okay. because we're not in person. I can't hand you the things, and I forgot to ask Rowan to record them. So, um, so the first entry is from February twenty seventh, eighteen seventy seven. Marion Allen has acquired an artifact, purportedly Egyptian. It appears to be a small sarcophagus of gold. Inside is a large piece of amber, which entraps a specimen of some unknown species of arthropod. Allen is very excited, as the box corresponds to a description he found in an ordinary reference volume in the university's Orne Library. Allen says that in another book, De Verbis Mysterious, which you remember as uh, the book that Meriwether referenced in his original letter, is an explanation of the powers of the box. 
The text says the small animal trapped in the amber is actually the host to a bound djinn, a guide to the spirit world. Alan says the tome mentions that originally there were four such pieces of amber contained in the box. There is no mention what happened to the other three. We are agreed and a date has been set to conduct a ceremony intended to summon the djinn, which Alan assures us will be friendly. We have chosen the night of Saturday, the 18th of March, the night before the new moon. The next entry is from March 19th of the same year. We begin the ceremony as Alan instructed, according to that described in De, Vim De Vermis Mysterious. A fire is set in the fireplace and a pentagram chalked on the floor marked with appropriate symbols and illuminated by two black tapers placed near the center, flanking the piece of amber with its entrapped spirit. The others sit in a circle while I, the designated watcher, who guards for malevolent spirits, sits in the corner of the room. At least I get the comfort of a chair, while the others can look forward to sitting on the floor for hours. Alan throws a handful of powder in the fire, producing an evil-smelling smoke and dampening the flames, which now burn a sputtering green and brown. Those seated on the floor begin the Latin chant Alan has transcribed from his book. After nearly two hours, I see a trail of smoke circling up from the piece of amber. Its surface seems to be bubbling and melting. Can this be? Have we finally achieved success? I can see a form... Dot, dot, dot. The next entry is from the next day and Mary Brother doesn't seem to describe what happened in between. We have finished our plans and have sworn a pact never to speak of what happened last night. We have satisfactorily, satisfactorily explained the death of poor Robert and in some manners the madness of Harold. The sheriff ex accepts the explanation of a carriage accident. We planned it well. Robert's neck was broken in the fall, we told him. Harold struck his head on a rock when the horse's leg broke and the carriage rolled. Would it be that it was only that? For the rest of us, we will forever be changed by what we experienced last night. I will write down the true events so they are not completely lost. The thing formed in the center of the pentagram, shapeless and nearly invisible. Its terrible voice should have given us a clue, but we were so foolish. It spoke. Then Ellen cast that damned powder on the gin, the dust of Ibn Ghazi, he called it, and that's when we could all see it clearly. Words cannot adequately describe the faceless thing with a thousand maws. It roiled and bubbled, never fully revealing itself to anyone. So terrifying was its aspect that I was frozen in place, my pen falling from my nerveless fingers. Cecil and Alan seemed as lifeless as myself, while a short, sharp cry from Crawford's mouth. Robert, however, rose to his feet and before anyone could stop him, stepped forward as though to embrace our horrible guest. With its arms on those appendages that seemed most like arms, it took hold of poor Robert and twisted his head around as though he was a doll. The lifeless corpse was then thrown back in Harold's lap and that's when he began that damnable shrieking, the shrieking that hasn't stopped since after we handed him off to the sheriff's men. We still had a chance apparently Ellen now believes that if we had kept our wits, we could have reversed the summoning and forced the creature back where it came from. But Crawford panicked and mistakenly believed that it would dispel the creature, reached forward and destroyed part of the pentagram, breaking the seal and ending its effectiveness. Released from that binding symbol, the thing with a screech that could only have been unholy satisfaction was ejected from the house, disappearing out the window as a roaring screaming wind of boiling colors. And that is mostly what you get. There's a few other entries describing Mary and Alan going back to the house to retrieve belongings um, and <clears throat> saying that he believes that uh, whatever it is, is confined to the house. And then there is one entry quite a while later that describes uh, Meriwether discovering that Marion Allen, who appears to be some sort of group leader, uh, is dead, murdered in New Orleans. Okay. 
cool, cool, cool. Super cool. Yeah, no big deal. Yeah, so, you know, just compiling notes from what I'm reading. Yeah. Um, I will also say, having read the whole thing, uh, you take one point against your sanity, but you mm-hmm. also add one to your Cthulhu Mythos skill. Mm, cool. And you nice. also can check off the occult skill as a successful occult thing that you have done. Nice. Okay. Toy. So while I was reading this, I had like a, a brandy and it just didn't touch it the whole time because of the crazy bullshit I was reading. Mm-hmm. That checks out. Um, you yeah. take your brandy. Uh, and you said you also wanted to look around Meriwether's office. Was that correct? Yeah. First to find the book of that had the binding spell and some other stuff and just to see what might be relevant for us uh, to deal with Absolutely. some sort of evil genie. That's what I said. It's just a small animal trapped in some glass. Um, okay, so <laughs> you look around Meriwether's office. Uh, first, the book that you procured from the ghoul is sitting right there on the desk, easy to find, and you take that okay. for yourself. Um, looking around the office, give me a spot hidden check. Eighty. I just think that that is a failure. <laughs> um, By several magnitude. So there's quite a few pieces of interest around his office. You're not too sure. So you see various things. There are a few pieces that you are familiar with in terms of you absolutely sold them to Meriwether probably shocked at how much she was willing to pay for them given when you were selling them they appeared to be mundane items now you feel you know possibly worth a second look uh in particular there is a pocket mirror as well as a old uh candle in the little like brass candle holders that you'd, you know, tiptoe around on Christmas morn with. Yes, the Ebenezer Scrooge candle holder. A hundred percent. That's exactly it. Um, as well as a uh, an old jewel encrusted sword, which is not typically something you would have in the store, but it came upon your possession, and the only person who seemed interested in it was Meriwether. Okay. Now that I have a bit more understanding of, you know, the craziness of the world, do these things, like, have more meaning to me? Yeah, give me an occult check. 40. So, oh, never mind, 90. So failed. So close. Um... Close. So I will say there doesn't appear to be any special properties on the sword. You see that uh, Meriwether has placed a white taper candle within the candle holder, but again, you're not too sure about any specific properties. Uh, What I will say doesn't require a check is you, you take the pocket mirror and you are watching, looking at it, but what you're seeing back isn't yourself looking at it, it's yourself looking away. And as you look over to the side to see what you are looking at, Mm -hmm. and you look back and you see yourself looking to the right and about 10 seconds later, you look over to the right to see what it is. And it just doesn't seem to be showing you your current reflection. 
Okay. Well, that's weird. So, add that to the pile of spooky shit. <laughs> yeah, I think spooky is where we live now. I might as well embrace it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Well, I'm you know, reading through more of the original manuscript. I gotta make a sandwich. Absolutely. Uh, I will say, as you're reading through the original book uh, and helping yourself to a very well-stocked uh, and elaborate kitchen, you you find that uh, section of spell work again, and you read through the ritual listed there, and it really seems to describe a scene similar to that which Meriwether described in his journal. You see instructions such as start at midnight, pentagram, burning the chemicals, making the chant. However, you don't see any specifics about this chant. You can't find a script anywhere, what language it might be in. Uh, it just references the chant. Okay. Uh... In all of Meriwether's books, do I find the verb is mysterious or no? Uh, it's a good question. I won't make you roll for it. It does not appear to be a book that's in his possession at all. Okay. So I just take note that I'm probably going to have to go to the university's library. Perfect. Troy. Yeah, uh, I don't know how far Jimmy's house is, but I guess I'd take the bus. Yeah, he would live in the essentially suburbs, so it's a good half an hour, 45 minute ride out into the suburbs and you find yourself at Jimmy's house. Yeah, I think Troy's just like sitting, staring at the window, a thousand yard stare and almost like misses the stop. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Uh, so you come up to, to his home and the lights are on and yeah I think it's a, I think it's like after early morning after you inside knock on the door and just... yeah and Jimmy's mom answers oh Troy hi yeah um, I just came to check on Jimmy um, I said I would so I just want to make sure everything's uh, she starts to tear up again as appears to be her MO and uh, she pulls you inside you were the first one to check up on him. Um, I really appreciate it. No problem. Um, he's good. Why don't you go see him upstairs? I'll, I'll bring you, you boys, some refreshments. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I just make my way up. I mention upstairs or to his room. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Mrs. Quinton goes into the kitchen, starts making up peanut butter sandwiches, uh, and you make your way to Jimmy's room. You yeah. see that the door is slightly ajar, and before even entering a little peek in, you can see Jimmy just sitting on his bed, hands on his knees, just kind of staring. Yeah, I think I try not to startle him and just, like, gently knock on the door. He looks up. Oh, Troy. Hey. Uh, and he, he looks confused where he is. Um, come, come in. Okay, yeah. Um, your mom's gonna be up with some sandwiches, but I just wanted to check. And I, like, walk over to the sort of the... into the room and sort of just, like sit at the edge of the bed, trying to just give him as much space as possible. Just came to check on you. It was pretty traumatic a few days, I imagine. I just want to make sure. I mean, even asking if you're okay seems crazy. And you see he kind of goes distant for a second, and then he looks back at you and like a sudden snap throws his hands on your shoulder goes, where am i what what happened why are you here jimmy i need 
I sort of like gently grab his hands that are on my shoulders and I like gently take them off. <laughs> and I'm like, I just need to talk to you about what happened. Do you remember anything that had happened? There was Coach Parker and blood and you and some old men. <laughs> Can I just, I, I imagine I'm gonna roll terribly at this, but I just wanna check like he's, losing his mind, right? This is... Yeah, like, give me a psychology check. Yeah, that's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I should have been here for this one. We should have swapped jobs. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but thematically. <laughs> thematically. Like, uh, uh, I rolled a 15, which is not enough, but I will Two use five 15, luck. 15, 94. <laughs> yeah. I, Sorry, it's not use... enough. I'm going to use five luck. To yeah. make it ten. All right. Um, you you know the look well, having seen the same look in Clyde's face before he fleed from this frog god, and the same look in Donald's face when he couldn't even look it in the eye. Uh, Jimmy is absolutely slowly losing his mind and remembering pieces of what happened every once in a while. Oh, Jimmy. Uh, uh, listen, man. I'm not... I don't know what's right for you right now. Because I could see you're struggling. But I feel like... Do you have questions? I can answer how, questions however you need them, but I don't know if it's right to tell you. And you can see the anger kind of fade out of his eyes a little bit, that like um, hunger that he just had and uh, a look of defeat swipes over his face. And he goes, I don't know, man, am I, am I gonna be okay? Saying yes feels like I'm rolling fast talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, what you went through was horrible. On a regular day, that was horrible, but this was extra horrible. And if you aren't all the way better, that's okay. Because this was not a normal situation to be in. But I think you can make it through the other side. All right, give me a... Wow, we usually use fast talk, so I can't think if it's persuasion or charm. It's probably something like that. Um, uh, let me just see what I got. Sure, sure. L M N O P. Everyone knows their alphabet, right? Yeah, persuade, persuade, yes. Persuade, yeah. Uh, Top right column. Yep. Yep. Better at lying. You're going to be bad. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you didn't even say you're going to be fine. You said it's okay to not feel okay. No, you didn't. I would take a picture of it. Oh That's a God. weird night, guys. Future Rebecca, don't worry oh about putting God. this in. It's too, <laughs> no, you better, too put it in. you better put it in. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, great. Uh, so you, oh my God. you look deep into Jimmy's eyes and he lets out a big sigh. He goes, my, my mom's got me uh, set up for a doctor appointment uh, this week I just I don't know man it's you get it I don't I don't have a lot of guys to talk to and yeah no yeah it's not fun being the outcast but I'm gonna be gone for a few days I actually need your help with that a little bit but when I get back uh, maybe we could hang out I'd, I'd love that. And as you guys are having this moment, uh, Mrs. Quinton comes in overly joyful, overly trying to make sure everyone's having a good time. Boys, I have sandwiches. Oh, you cut the crust off. That's so nice of you. Um, and, and milk and uh, she puts everything down. Are we having okay time up here? Do you guys We're doing okay. Anything? No. Sorry, I don't want to speak for you, buddy. Uh, and Jimmy just kind of like nods at his mom. 
and she looks like that's the most communication she's gotten from him in a while um and excitedly well i'll i'll just be downstairs if you need anything um exits uh, okay um uh yeah i like eat my sandwich and talk to him for a bit and just sort of like he kind of gets it like he just went through something very similar and the two gentlemen that are with him are much older so jimmy's like the closest thing to a peer he has in this horrible situation yeah absolutely um so like yeah but like after like an hour of like just trying to be a comfort if i can i, I sort of like get up off the bed and i'm like jimmy i just need you to do me a favor i know moving around isn't the best but if you could contact one of the guys on the team and give coach kennedy this i'm yeah. gonna resign i think um i just think i have to focus on my studies at the moment i i get it man i think i might hand in my own for for a bit i'm uh, just gonna have, have to figure out how to pay for school now so I'm here. You've been here for me. I'm here for you. And he reaches out a hand to, to yeah. shake hands. Yeah, shake hands. Okay. Um, I have stuff. Sorry. I you don't. Go. You don't got to explain to me. All right. I Bye. just leave and basically, just like as I'm leaving, talk to his mom and be like. He seems to be in a good headspace right now, but he went through something very traumatic. Just, you know, if he seems not like himself, it's just because he went through very, something very strong. And like, make sure he sees that doctor. And then I asked to borrow a bike. Uh, yeah, she sniffles the whole time you have this discussion uh, and then absolutely lets you borrow a bike uh, yeah. on your way out. Yeah, and then I ride a bike with like a card in the spokes all the way to Meriwether's house. Uh, cute as hell. <laughs> oh, perfect. So, is there anything else anyone really wanted to accomplish or get through? I know there was a mention of potentially checking something out at the library. Uh, yeah. If there's still time, Donald would go to the university library because that's where it said the Verbus Mysterious was found originally, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, are you going alone or the with Troy when he gets there or anything like that? If after searching through the place, the guys haven't come back yet, I'll just write a note saying where I'm going. I'll be back in like an hour. All right, perfect. Um, you head out to that library then. And I'm just going to double check. Uh, so you head out there and I'll just have you make a library use roll. Okay. Hey, I can get a lowish number. 48. All right. Um, with discussion and a search of the uh catalog card system uh, you find that the university does have a copy on catalog however it is locked away in a restricted section of the library and there would be a specific professor that uh, you would need to contact in order to see a copy of it and it's absolutely not available for checkout okay uh, who's the professor? Uh, yeah, the professor is Dr. Armitage, um, and you can absolutely, um, find him at the university easily. Uh, if you want to see the book, it will probably be, uh, a charm or persuade role. Yeah, I'll definitely, if he's in his offices, I'll go see if he's available have a discussion yeah, absolutely uh yeah he welcomes you in uh a little confused i think to not have a student uh walking in um 
What can, what can I do for you, old chap? Oh, hello. Uh, I'm Donald Buford. I'm uh, a colleague of Rupert Merriweather. And oh, Professor Merriweather, excellent. Yes. He's unfortunately not doing so well, and he's in the hospital right now. Oh. And I was taking over a bit of his research uh, to you know, help him during these you know, troubled times so he doesn't get too far behind. And uh, one of the things that came up was uh, needing translation with uh, De Verbis Mysterious. And I saw from the university library that needs to come through you to have access to the book. Interesting, very interesting. Um, give me a charm or persuade your choice. Um, I will persuade because that is a little bit higher. You can do it. Uh, seven. <laughs> seven zero? Yeah, is, that fails. Okay. Um, <sighs> He he looks at you skeptically. Um, I wasn't aware that De Vermis Mysterious was part of Rupert's line of intrigue. Um, perhaps if you could come back with some sort of note or authorization, I can consider. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll that might be a little hard considering how bedridden Rupert is currently, but uh, is there like authorization from a different professor, someone who's you know, not on their deathbed that I could get for access to the book? I can show you like Rupert's notes and what it's referring to for De Verbis Mysterious, if that helps. I've only recently just taken on this uh, project for him. Perhaps that will suffice. He definitely seems cautious of you at that at this point. Um, if you want to share the book um, in Rupert's handwriting, did you do a charm before or persuade before? I can't remember. Persuade. Okay, yeah. Um, I'd say this is kind of like pushing the role a little bit uh, to show him okay. something that's a little bit more dangerous. I mean, these are not university notes. These are Rupert's personal notes. Um, mm -hmm. So you can roll Persuade again, but right. it could be more dire uh, if it's a fit. That's a 20. That sounds so that better. Is, uh... Is it a hard success? Is that what it is? Your... 25 is half. So Okay, yeah, so you're in a hard success. Thanks. All right. Um, he takes a look at your materials and seems to give you a little bit of leeway. Uh, I do recognize Rupert's handwriting. I am surprised to see him delving into these types of rituals however things uh professors are always researching different avenues at the university um i can take you to see the book and answer some questions it's something that i have start recently started uh, my own studies into that that would be lovely thank you all right. He mm -hmm. takes you down to this chained up section of the library behind lock and key. And there's a burly librarian, uh, some sort of enforcer slash uh, bookkeeper down there. And he takes you down the aisles in his white cotton gloves and pulls out this old black leather tome with Divermis Mysterious etched onto it. Uh, leads you to a table and lays the book out and goes, um, you're welcome to read whatever you want and I will be right over there if you need anything. Okay. Uh, I'll 
start going through the texts and try and find anything relating to the ceremony that was listed in the journal. Cool. So, uh, because I don't think your character is familiar with ancient Latin, you can just give me like a language check, uh, sure. and we'll see what you can decipher. So I need to roll like a one. Yeah. Yeah, essentially. Okay. Got an 18. So I have 19 luck. So I'll just use 17 of it to pass. You got to do what you got to do, man. Yeah. Uh, there are really no limit to how much luck you can use. Yeah. Well, yeah. When you get to zero. Zero. One left. I one mean, left. like at a time, like if I wanted to spend like all 60 of my luck on my first roll to get to a one from like 61 or something. It's a good question. And like, I'm sure someone in the chat can let us know if that's not how you play Cthulhu, but that's how <laughs> I play Cthulhu. Okay. Can't do that. Um, <laughs> great, I like so to you... get it back. So. Yeah, exactly. Uh, with a very limited knowledge of Latin, I keep going to say Italian. <laughs> just such different languages. Um, with just a, a recipe. <laughs> yeah, mm. marinara. Um, with a, there are red stains on the pages, so that's that's not great. Um, and as you flip through, you see the world kind of foggy around you, and the words jumbling and almost coming up off the page. And I'll have you do a sanity roll. Uh, I passed. Okay. Um, so you're able to smooth down the pages and uh, find this section that uh, seems to correlate to what you're looking for in terms of uh, binding and exorcism and trying to eliminate some creature like this. Uh, you don't know all the words, but you feel pretty confident you found the section that references what you're looking for. Okay. I'll, as best I can, I will copy down. Yeah, your mic went a little weird there, but I understand you want to copy the, the content in your journal. Yes. Um, yeah. So you do so, especially with the role uh, you're able to to do that easily. Um, and when you're all finished, uh, Dr. Armitage, kind of, he was reading his paper on the side, uh, comes up and, do you have everything you need? Uh, yeah, for the moment, I think I've got everything I need. We don't allow cats in the library. I'm so sorry to tell you. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> um, great, so... Uh, he takes the book gingerly from you and closes it and places it back on the shelf, gives the librarian a nod as the two of you leave, uh, shakes your hand, and Mr. Buford, I wish you luck in your future endeavors. So thank you very much for today, and uh, I believe we'll be able to collaborate later. Of course. Um, and he walks off. So I head back to Meriwether's. Perfect. Um, Troy and Clyde, assuming you're back at Meriwether's, perhaps having a drink in the salon. A few. Yeah, yeah just a few. <laughs> There's a bunch of empty glasses, yeah. just using them all up, I guess. Yeah, considering Troy has only had one, a few seems like a lot. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Donald joins you in the salon. Um, what information would you guys like to share with each other? Well, I think, um, mine's the least interesting, but I did, uh, inform my contact with the police about, uh, the situation with Jimmy, just saying that there was a, uh, apparent kidnapping and Jimmy became dehydrated and, uh, kind of delusional and seemed to, there seemed to have been a fight and he escaped, um, but potentially may have uh, killed his kidnapper in the process. So things kind of line up. Um, 
and you know apparently died by a wrestling move so that's beneficial for us and I think they're off, uh, our, off any uh, suspicion for the delay in time that's good Jimmy's alive but he's getting help but it's pretty bad it's not surprising yeah my medicine is probably not the right answer but I'm not doing so hot either I found what I think is the bulk of the ceremonies involved and what actually happened at the the farmhouse. So there's a lot to catch you guys up on. Okay. The, what are the quick notes? Um, there's a... They summoned an evil genie originally. Write that down. Genie. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it might be still somehow linked to the house. So, okay. Tethered we'll probably day. need the ceiling uh, spell or. Uh, Pull that out of my backpack. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because it looks like that's what they were originally using. Mm, but okay. uh, they made a mistake, I think. And I've got uh, what I think is relevant passages from a book at the university. I just need to translate them, but I didn't have a Latin to English dictionary on me at the time. Wait. Well, we've so, got Merriweather's library if we need to Yeah. any final research. It's also, you know, a couple weirdo objects that I found earlier and around his study and I can show you guys the sword, the candlestick holder and the little pocket mirror okay not entirely sure what they all do but can't hurt to have them yeah. I think I grab the sword and swing it like a baseball baseball bat a few times sort of get a feel for it yeah, you do. It's it's hefty, um, and you can give me a, a spot hidden check to take a look at it. Mm. Okay, I rolled a fifty-two, uh, but I'm going to spend five luck okay. and get the right number. Perfect. Um, so yeah, you note that the sword is is heavy and could definitely do some damage in a bludgeoning manner, um, but it doesn't appear to be sharp. Um, and you also note that although jewel encrusted on the hilt, uh, they do not seem to be, they're good fakes, but they are fake gems. Um, unsure if this is because Barryweather got ripped off or he just likes the look of having an awesome sword in his collection. This has dark magic within it. I could feel it. <laughs> yeah, same with this uh, candle, I guess. Uh, can I just turn it over and around to make sure there's nothing like actually on it? Does this just seem like a regular candle? Yeah, you do so. And the candle does appear to be it's like in one of those little like Scrooge style <laughs> like um, brass holders. Uh, and the candle does appear to kind of stay in place from welted mac, melted wax. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that was a weird one. Um, and, but there doesn't seem to be anything, anything strange about it. It's a cream taper candle uh, that has definitely been burned, uh, but is not like a small nub or anything. I mean, Donald, these don't seem that strange. It's, uh, I mean, I I understand candles and rituals, Abba. Yeah, I pick up the connection. pocket mirror and point it at him. Yeah. Like, oh, just a mirror. I put up the candle in front of it. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> Clyde, you look in the mirror, and for a second you see the candle, but then you see the candle uh, go down, and you see yourself look up and start mouthing some words. What the fuck? Yeah, it's right? not it's just it's... a normal mirror. <laughs> I'm just it's making not... shit up. Okay, well, <laughs> this one... The sword yeah. is just a sword, it seems. 
the mirror lets you see the future? Or uh, a future? A future? And uh, how useful you, is uh, that? To see yourself in a second. You're glancing down and you see a puzzle, your, your puzzled look on your face. Um, and yeah, it appears to be maybe five, ten seconds. Hmm. And it is doing what you end up doing, but is that because you're seeing it or because that's what's meant to happen? It's hard to say. Okay, I just want to mm. try one thing and then we could start everything. Hold the mirror up and see if you could see behind you using the mirror. And then I'm just going to run across where the mirror would show just to see if <laughs> I appear in the mirror. Yeah, looking yeah. over the shoulder. That's it. Um, Go around you... the corner. You do that, and yeah, you do see Troy whip through uh, about five seconds before he actually runs behind you. Okay, well, we could use it for people or things sneaking up on us, maybe. Yeah, kind of an early warning system. You're sneaking around in someone's house. Keep that at the at the hallway. See if they're coming. Okay, yeah. interesting. Uh, I was assuming we kind of wanted to do a last look through things here, do some last bits of research, see, see yeah. if there's anything we're missing or anything we need around the house. We'll and gather what we need to do the yeah. ceiling. Ceremony. Yeah. I, yeah, I sort of s s put the, the sword through a belt loop and I'll go look for some supplies for this weekend. I think Meriwether had a gun somewhere in here. His face lights up just a little. <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, you've caught on quickly with everything else. Why not? <laughs> yeah. And I go off immediately. <laughs> Perfect. So Troy is looking for supplies as well as Meriwether's hidden gun. Um, Clyde? Yeah, I think I, you know, just kind of detective style. I want to splay things out on the table, anything that Donald's not specifically looking at and see if I can find the connections between the, the stuff in the journal and the old book um, and specifically those bloodied pages or anything we might might see in there that yeah. is about this potential ritual or something. Cool. Uh, and then, Donald, what are you doing in this time? Uh, you know, grabbing the old trusty Latin English dictionary and trying my best to translate what I'd scribbled down. Yeah, absolutely. Make sure I'm not going completely insane. Uh, perfect. Then Troy and Clyde, you can give me spot hidden checks, and Donald, you can give me a library use check. Sure. That is a success for me. Yep. Almost, almost a really good success. 47, and I need 73. Yeah, I got a 44, so I'm good. All right. Um, starting with you, Troy, you find uh, all the items that you might need, blankets, um, flashlights, food, uh, whatever, some journals for some more note note taking. Um, you don't find the gun immediately, but you do find a, a wall safe behind a picture in Meriwether's bedroom. Um, as you're searching around his room, you do also find uh, this wall safe is a series, uh, it's a combination lock. Um, and you do see, as you're snooping through his bedside drawers, um, you do see a set of numbers that could potentially be that combination. Cool. I grab anything with numbers on it and just start working on the. <laughs> I don't think that there's like a, a it'll lock me out after three tries. So. <laughs> so I'll just try all the numbers. Yeah, we're not that advanced yet. Um, yeah. Perfect. So you uh, you work on that, uh, Clyde. You are looking around. You're you're researching um, and cross referencing. You find a few things. The first is that Meriwether and his crew used to call themselves the Dark Brotherhood, and you see that is kind of noted in the journals and in uh, oh, nice. the pages, but always in a like joking, like dead poet society mm. style 
uh, reference to themselves and not necessarily that they truly feel that they are dark cultists. Okay. So um, they're not bad boys, bad boys. No, they're just, they're just bad boys. Okay. Um, you also uh, find um, one of the rituals that you think it was most likely what was used for the summoning as it's all torn and bloodied. Uh, and then you find the instruction, the other set of instructions that was quite worn. Uh, you feel pretty confident upon seeing, you know, Latin chant and, and things like that, that that's probably something that's going to be required from you guys. Mm. Um, yep. and, uh, I'd say between either Clyde or Donald, who are both poring over documents, you can give me an occult check as well as you discuss yeah. the ritual. Yeah. Oh, not, not both. Yeah, it's five. Either one. So we, we can see if the miracle's on my side, but we only missed it by a few. Uh, yeah, I'm okay. I, I needed a 50 year old uh, 34. Okay, perfect. Um, so there's a few pieces that you pull out of the journal encounters as well. The first is that uh, they did their summoning on a full moon, which you would know to be pretty potent in the magical community. Um, you There's reference to a pentagram on the ground, uh, and you remember that from your frog god encounter as something that might be helpful in summoning. Um, and then the last... Oh, and then uh, that the chant needs to be continuous. It seems that something happened during their uh, their ritual that the chanting stopped and that is really where all hell broke loose so to speak uh, just out of curiosity mm -hmm. where are we currently in the lunar cycle yeah you uh, <laughs> you look that up in an almanac or uh, not Farmers. you don't google it because <laughs> yeah. You can't do that. Um, and the lunar, uh, the full moon seems to be uh, in, not tonight, uh, not the next night, but the night after. Okay. Um, and then the last piece that you find that is maybe concerning, but you're not too sure, is that there's mention of burning chemicals um, right. required. Uh, the chemicals in question are a, a mix of uh, an oxide cop of copper and a sulfur, uh, things that you don't feel like you could find just lying around. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, probably a trip to the chemistry lab. Oh, yeah, I know what that is. Okay. So are we robbing again? Is that what's happening? Just borrowing on a permanent basis. Great. You can't click. just buy from a school, can you? No. Um, and last but not least, Donald, uh, you are able to translate a few words that really takes the key section, you think, of the page that you copied down in the Orn Library. Uh, you see words like exercise and demon and banish. Um, you also see some names that I'm not going to make you spell. I can write them out for you later, but Nyar Lathop and Azatoth and okay. what, uh, what feel like very, uh, mythos inspired names based on what and you guys have researched heavy. lately. Yeah. Uh, not, not a lot of apostrophes, but mm. no. And yeah, and then uh, Clyde and Donald, once you finish up, you, uh, upon looking for Troy, find him in the bedroom uh, with a safe, a wall safe um, that he has just cracked open. Uh, what you doing there? Getting a gun. <laughs> uh, are you sure? Yep, just looking for the holster. Okay. Um, you do see in the safe, uh, as anticipated, the gun um, and a holster 
uh, about two hundred dollars cash and a passport. Cool. We probably can't take the stuff. No, we can't. I just close the safe. <laughs> you can probably borrow the gun. I'm sure he'd be fine with that. Yeah, I'll give it back. Yeah. Uh, hopefully I can ask him. We may have a job for you. Okay. I'll just throw you the school keys. Um, we need something. Uh, I don't know what the chemical was. Donald? Copper oxide and sulfur. Okay, write that down. I'm sure I'll forget by the time I get there. Yeah, but, it'll yeah, probably I can, I... both be in powders. powders. Okay, yeah. Yeah, sure. I, I'm i sure I'm a student, so I'll just be chill. Cool. Um, yeah, let's try not to be seen, I guess. Uh, I guess, no, it's fine. It's fine. I just feel yeah. like when you break into places uh, back to back, you should be careful, but you... Only if you get caught. Yeah. We didn't get caught. So. Great. All right, I'll drive us back to school, take a nap, and you let us know when you've uh, pulled it off. Yep. Okay. I walk nonchalantly. Yeah. Since you guys have broken into this particular school before, <laughs> a few days ago, yeah. actually. I, yeah, we have keys to the gym, so I'll start there. Yeah, so uh, we'll just do it kind of as a skill check. So you... You're able to get into the gym and you're walking through the halls and you know the wings well so you find the chemistry section um, of the school uh give me a stealth check just to see how well you're blending in yeah that's i mean that's a success it's not good it's a success that's a success okay um so you're able to get into the chemistry lab uh and the less harmful chemicals are kept in a store room um, that a appears to be unlocked for, you know, whether that's okay. Uh, we'll see. Um, and you go in. Uh, things are... Troy, you're not a chemistry major, um, not even a chemistry minor. And... You're looking at the labels and everything's letters and numbers uh, and it's a bit confusing to figure out you're looking for just the word sulfur that would be great um but that's not what you're seeing okay um you can if you have a science skill um you could nope. definitely give me <laughs> otherwise you can give um, an unskilled role or do how something else. many are of them are there uh, I would say there's quite a few. There's probably like 50 different powder, uh, like containers of powder. Okay. Is there a waste basket in the science lab? Yeah, definitely. Okay, I put all 50 in the waste basket. <laughs> what am I? I'm not going to guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, you bring whatever we don't use. We'll leave it for someone to find. <laughs> Uh, you do so uh, as you are leaving the lab uh, you run into one of the janitors uh, who sees you at the wastebasket and oh son uh, you don't don't have to worry about that I can I can cover it oh sorry hi uh, I'm a new hire I just started as a janitor it's really the only way I can keep up with my studies and be able to afford it and stuff. So just doing my job. Uh, I actually have a guy who's helping me. I'm supposed to meet him now. Uh, give me a fast talk. Check. <laughs> give me a good little hunting roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My car. <laughs> That's a three. <laughs> That's a great success. Great success. Um yeah you hear he's like slurring his words a little bit too uh and he goes they just the old noggin's not working like it used to uh carry on and just uh walks into the science lab wow it's easy um i 
try to avoid janitors on my way out because there's no way I'm getting that lucky place. Absolutely. Uh, you make it back to Tro makes it back to the car. Uh, Clyde and Donald uh, expecting to see him walk up with, you know, a vial or maybe uh, something in his pocket. He has a full waste basket uh, full of containers. Yeah, I don't know what sulfur or oxide. I forgot what it was called. Copper uh, oxide is so I. They don't have it just written on there. No, it's just symbols. Donald, oh. if you could find them, and then I'll. Uh, Leave the rest up with the drunk janitor that I found. Uh, I think okay. we just gotta take him and go. Okay, all right. Put him in the back seat with Donald. Did we uh, just clean out the entire chemistry lab? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're walking back the don't steal piece really quick. I didn't think we'd take them all. I think we just. I thought you would just take the ones you needed and we'd leave the rest here. I mean, Donald, you science man, I. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> yeah, anyone can give me. I mean, even you, you'll still have like a base. Uh, it's probably one to five percent. One percent. Yeah. I'll yeah, roll, but it's like, you're so, all welcome to roll. How does a seventy do you? You could use all that luck. <laughs> nope, not that many. Still one sixty. It's a seventy-eight. Jeez. Yeah, seventy-five. Nice. So we're, we're all nice, in nice, the nice. same group. So you're taking a waste basket of powders. Uh, yeah, with you. Yeah. This feels safe. Yeah, this feels. It didn't fine. feel safe when I put them all in there. It felt like I was kind of making a bomb by accident. Yeah. Uh, oh, Jesus. Do you have a waste basket I could separate these in? Clyde? We have a car. Uh, should I go get another waste basket? No, no. just put in the trunk. Uh, okay. I'll hand you my coat to wrap it around in case that might dampen any uh, extreme jostling that might get stuff to break. Yeah. Yeah, I take my jacket and take half of the bottles and wrap them in that and mm. stick it on top and then use your jacket to wrap. That's fine, right? That's the best we're going to have. Uh, we got a few hours to drive, so I'd rather not yeah. figure this out here and just go. And Honestly, what it sounds like we're going toward is hell, and so if we die on the way, and that's fine. Yeah. Great. I don't agree, but I get you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you guys pile into the car and start making the journey, um, leaving. Arkham is, uh, you know, it's a busy city. Even at night, people are heading out dinner and dancing and speakeasies and uh, and you drive for a few hours uh, and the streetlights start to vanish and the air starts to get misty and foggy uh, and you make your way to the small town of Red, uh, Red Corner um, that you know uh, the farmhouse to be located in. You have the address from the deed and following some maps, uh, you slowly make your way into town. It seems like a very quiet, sleepy town with a gas station and a corner a hardware store, uh, some sort of city hall uh, and community gathering center. Um, but nobody's out, uh, not nearly as vibrant as it was in the city. And you drive slowly through town, noting that there are no cars out on the, on the roads. Uh, not even any young teenagers sneaking about that you might expect in the middle of the night. It is eerily quiet. And too quiet. you pull up to this old farmhouse. Uh, you have to drive down a dirt path of field even to get there, and you see a little bit of a garden to the side, but it looks very weathered and worn. Um, the farmhouse itself seems to have uh, a one, it seems to be one story with what appears to be a small attic. 
Um, it's definitely not large, maybe a few bedrooms at most, or a few rooms at most, sorry. Um, and there is an old truck husk out front, um, and you sort of pull off and park next to that. Uh, and yeah, the whole place is quiet. I mean, it doesn't look as imposing as I thought. I'd imagine some kind of ancient sprawling mansion full of, you know, secret halls and libraries, but this seems, I don't know. I think we can manage this. Do you remember the Nagalath, Clyde? My brain itches for a second. <laughs> uh, kind of. Yeah, that was in a gym. Yeah, that's fair. I guess. So, don't get lulled. We can't, you know, very likely can't get split up and lost. Remember those tunnels? I yeah, I don't know how this works. I don't know. It's I don't a know genie. The, yeah, I don't know the extent of what he can do. That's true. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, Need to keep our wits about us. And be prepared right. to seal it. And how do we do that? I uh, shake, gently shake the wastebasket. With this. Yeah. Gotta do all the things. Maybe not in, at night. This is, I don't feel, I don't want to go in there at night. Oh, we're on a time crunch. I think we're doing this now. Well, the ceremony stuff did talk about a full moon, so... I think we gotta wait like another day because then it'll be a full moon I've been sleeping here for two nights in this we know it's haunted yeah you don't have to sleep at the farmhouse okay just making sure I don't know where we're staying we're all sleeping in the car yeah I don't know I think I think we got to figure out maybe a little bit more of what we're up against. Yeah, there's like a little town here. Like we can maybe I mean, find out there. a little bit of like what people know about the property. Maybe we can finally figure out which one of these chemicals we need. I suppose. I reach in the bag of supplies for a couple flashlights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got them. We against a cursory glance inside. I really do feel like more information's in there than out of it. Yeah, like you can look, but if anything gets if too gonna, squirrely, we, we get yeah, out of there. Like, be prepared to you know cheese it. Clyde, bring the candle. All right. Yeah, you bring your replica sword. Mystical. Mr. I step out of the car. <laughs> sure. You got it, Arthur. Uh, who is leading the walk up to the door? Caliper. Yeah. Uh, I guess I would. I've got a candle and a gun. What else do you need? Uh, I've got a sword and a gun, but whatever. <laughs> I've got a pocket mirror. <laughs> uh, what else, indeed? Um, Clyde gave me a luck check. Interesting. <laughs> you <messed up> the <laughs> <whole other thing. laughs> um oh beat it by two 54 all right and you have a, a flashlight as well or you just have the candle no i just have the candle we had is, two flashlights so i've got an empty hand so I'm is the candle lit thing. uh yeah i'll light it okay um troy and donald have do you have flashlights and clyde as you're leading the way to the door uh you see out of the corner of your eye uh, something right in the path as uh, Troy's light goes over it, um, right before you were about to trip over uh, what looks like something uh, small animal sized on the ground. Uh, just spin around and see, see what it is. If it's still there. Yeah, you uh, have the guys shine the light on and 
it's hard to decipher what sort of animal this once was. Mm. You see guts spilling out and you see what looks like the rib cage pried open with nothing inside of it. And I'll have you all make a sanity check. Okay. Cool. Really glad we went inside. <clears throat> You're not That's... inside yet. Oh, You're true. We're not even. Yeah. Good, good, good. No. Nope. We're trying to roll under, right? 10 into yep. 70. 78. 85. Yep. That's failed. Try? I rolled better than Donald. I rolled really bad, so I that's an not promising. I rolled an 84. <laughs> uh, perfect. I just realized uh, my dice are no longer here. Um, You're not using physical dice? Disgusting. Could someone roll a d6 for me? Sure. Who do you think it should be? Who knows? Uh, I won't say the number. Yeah, you should. You should say the number. I rolled three. Okay, that's fine. So you all lose three points of sanity. Okay. Um, I had so much. <laughs> yeah. I just uh, got all my sanity back. I didn't actually get it all back, but I'm already losing it. Um. But uh, don't suffer any immediate madness. Um, as you see, uh, this thing with potentially its innards uh, missing on the ground. And I think that's where we will stop and you can enter the house uh, next week. Great, great, great. Yeah, Not foreboding yeah, yeah, at all. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Your guys' ribcages will be fine. Yeah. Maybe. They're <laughs> much normal. more sturdy than that. Squirrel? Cat? Uh, raccoon, Bigger? maybe? It just Bigger? feels like the worst cow? version of a cat cow? leaving you a... <laughs> uh. Oh, man. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, everyone. <clears throat> um, we mostly put out new videos every Friday when Rebecca doesn't forget to upload it. <laughs> and <laughs> um, please join us back here next week for the thrilling conclusion of our Call of Cthulhu mini series. Uh, we love you all. And, you know, I was going to say happy eclipse, but that would have already happened. So, um, there's a magic mirror out there. Yeah, happy post eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> happy post eclipse. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.